Well, the threat is enormous. You've essentially got double the force size in Iraq that you're told with the military, which means about 160,000 uh, private contractors. They're basically contracted for the most part from the State Department, which is not in the business of fighting wars, and they are largely uh, extracurricular to military leadership. Uh, probably the first step that I would take was to uh, bring them under the oversight of the senior military commander on scene in Iraq and require that force and those contractors to be beholden to and responsible to and accountable to the senior military commander in Iraq so that uh, we have a senior authority. And I suspect that, that probably the best way to do that would be the senior military commander, American commander in Iraq, and the senior Iraqi authority uh, to, to, to give them uh, very strict uh, guidance and oversight uh, while they're in country. The, the potential for harm with these largely unregulated forces it, it, it is, is profound. It undermines everything that we're trying to do. Now, many of you may know that I proposed a withdrawal from Iraq by 1231-09. That entire withdrawal process could be undermined by these largely unregulated, out-of-control private contractors. Everything we're trying to achieve in a military plan is based on an end state, a definable end state, and specific planning steps that you take to reach that end, end state. If you have an equal-sized force and you have no oversight or purview over that force, you have no idea what factors they will cause to enter into the equation that undermine that plan at every step of its execution. We, we have a very good possibility of not being able to execute a withdrawal from Iraq in anything approaching what we want to do because of the unknown influences of these contractors. They simply must be brought under control within and, and probably under the Defense Department is the most logical place to put it. Thank you.